We've got Terry McLaurin, Jonathan Allen, and Frankie Louvu. Frankie. With uh, Sam Cosme, Deron Payne in consideration here for the for the commanders. Anyone else? What are your thoughts on the list or anyone else that you would add to the mix here? So the Washington defensive tackles last year are an interesting case where Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, they're both on big money. Neither one of them had particularly good seasons. Um, Jonathan Allen at least was still a, f- a fairly significant factor as a pass rusher. 49 total pressures, 77.6 PFF pass rushing grade. That's good. It's not great. And he offset that somewhat by a 37 grade in the run game. Uh, by far the worst mark of his career. Like he's not, he's never been a particularly good run defender, but that was horrendous when it comes to run, uh, run defense. And the pass rushing stuff, I mean, that was the worst pass rushing grade we've seen from him since 2019 as well. Uh, and a kind of career, not a career low, but a, a, a relative low in the last few seasons in terms of overall production and, and rate. He's not at the age where you would expect him to decline, but it does at least sort of raise the question of, well, what are you going to get from him next season? And if you get that again, or if you get a, a version of that, that's a kind of level where I think there is an argument for other guys to potentially jump up. Yeah, the the roster, when you look at some of the players for Washington, because you have, you have a guy like Austin Eckler, who, who's who's similar, like the running back version of what you just described from Jonathan Allen, right? Years of really good play, didn't look right last year, didn't look the same. Allen, years of good play, didn't look the same last year. Deron Payne, he got paid a lot a few years ago. May have been overpaid, but he, you know, he's you don't have a whole lot of big guys who move like him, and he's still a, a solid player. Um, Jeremy Chin is a guy that I don't know if the PFF system captures his value all that well because he you know, he lines up all over the place and can do a lot of different things, but the production number has all has never been great for Jeremy Chin. So it's really an interesting group of players where you don't have you know clear hey these guys are always productive every single year. You have some of these older players coming off of uh you know lesser seasons but you you know they could easily bounce back next year new system dan quinn coming in especially on that defensive side of the ball bobby wagner is still i think a good player but not what he was a few years ago so interesting mix of players here in washington don't you think though that also like jeremy chin's career has kind of been borne out to actually like the pff grading kind of had it right to begin with like early in his career Grading didn't. Grading was never good, but he was making a bunch of big plays, and he was sort of lining up all over the defense. And everyone's like, "Oh, here's a new cornerstone." When they put a couple more pieces around, this guy's going to be amazing. And like, not only did Carolina not, you know, re-sign him to a long-term big money deal, like make him. Not only did they not back it up financially and say, "This is the guy. He's that. He's that cornerstone." Don't care what the grading says. But like, he ended up signing a one-year deal for like five million dollars in Washington. Like nobody else thought him thought of him as that either he's obviously you know physically talented and gifted and all those kinds of things but might actually be more of a, a flash in the pan than a guy that's you know a revolutionary game-changing defender yeah no I, I i don't disagree there i mean the other the other piece of washington here like if if Jaden daniels just hits the ground running is he in the mix at the end of the year, especially as a runner, if, if they lean into his running running ability a little bit as, as they ease him in as a rookie? Uh, Johnny Newton, Mike Sandristill, you know, some of those really productive second rounders that they brought in, drafting best player available. I mean, those guys could be in the mix by the end of the year too. So I think one of the – Washington's one of the more fascinating teams, I think, heading into this year because there's, there's big names, as we mentioned, who didn't really play well last year. You have a whole new situation – really love their draft i think the young players will have an opportunity to prove themselves they've got the rookie quarterback in jane and daniels gonna be interesting to see what happens with washington i think we'll agree with this though terry mclaurin is definitely on the list yeah and uh, i would put sam cosme maybe yeah definitely on the list as well with all of the different o-line combinations that they've had he's just been incredibly consistent over the last few years sandra still is an interesting shout um he could potentially be that guy like if he hits the ground running as a slot corner um and just plays at that kind of mike hilton level you know kenny moore level right away they definitely would put him in the argument um cosme's a good one i was going to mention that like he's always been a good run blocker in the nfl had a couple of years playing sort of not even starting necessarily but but manning right tackle last year they moved him inside to right guard 
the run blocking stayed as good as it ever was, and his PFF pass blocking grade took a giant step forward. Um, he gave up one sack all season, uh, had the by far the best pass blocking grade of his career. I mean, if he can back that up, if that's an indication of who he is, he's one of the better guards in the NFL right away, and that at least puts him in the conversation with Jonathan Allen, with Frankie Louvu, um, as being that extra guy. I think I would probably give Jonathan Allen the benefit of the doubt. You know, last year was a bad year. Maybe in a, now we've got a new defensive system. Dan Quinn comes in. If you get a bounce back year from Jonathan Allen, he's probably their second best player. And then the third would be Frankie Louvu versus Cosby, I think.